So first of all, I am very grateful to Professor Mahajan to uh, provide this opportunity to share my calculations and results with the experts and also some students. So what I will do is that I will present my calculations as well, but introductory part is also there about the problem which I am doing. It is not uh, directly related with fusion, but it is about hot plasmas and general plasma dynamics. So our aim is, uh, I go to next slide from here. Okay, the aim is to understand the physical mechanism for the generation of seed magnetic field. And then to find out two dimensional and three dimensional analytical solutions of two fluid MHD and neutral fluids equations with given spatial, I mean, the structure on space is assumed to be given by density and temperatures. And then using justifiable uh, justifiable assumptions because we are trying to do analytical calculations, so we need some assumptions. And do, to search for a possible mechanism for the generation of vertical flows. Uh, I will introduce this uh, 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 problem later. So how the vertical produce, uh, uh, flows are produced in the plasma. And to investigate the formation of ordered structures, such as spicules in the solar atmosphere. Uh, yes. yes, okay. So first the observations. Observations show that all galaxies almost have magnetic field, large scale magnetic fields of the order of 10 to minus six Gauss, micro Gauss. And lower limit on the seed magnetic field is that it should be greater than 10 to minus 25, 21 Gauss. Therefore, people have tried to obtain the seed magnetic field uh, by using plasma dynamics, which must be greater than 10 to minus 21 Gauss. And other observations tell us that the material outflows from the plasma in astrophysical environments are very commonly, uh, very common and have been observed in many objects. And the first observation is long ago by Curtis in 1918. And there are many other, I am just quoting a few, just give you the flavor if you want to consult the uh, literature. And then there are there is a huge amount of literature about sun where the spicules, coronal loops, prominences, flares, coronal mass ejections are observed in sun's atmosphere. And solar wind also is manifestation of the particle outflow from the plasma. So these are just a pictorial view of the galactic magnetic fields, which are on parsec size, large magnetic field scales. Magnetic field magnitude are small, but scales are very large. In initial laser plasma experiments, which were performed with the low power, low intensity lasers, and in those days, in early 70s, the laser intensity was 10 to 12 uh, watt per centimeter square approximately, and uh, laser pulse time was in nanoseconds. So the laser hits here, the target, solid target. This red is the plasma. Density gradient is electron density gradient because plasma increases in opposite direction. And if this is the temperature gradient, so the density gradient and temperature gradient here, curl of uh, the vector product of density gradient, electron density, and temperature gradient produces time dependent magnetic field. So, this was the basic idea. And these magnetic fields have been observed in initial laser experiments. Then, in accretion disks, the relativistic jets are produced of electron positrons, uh, and they have been observed large. They have large velocities. And this is the jets observed in young stellar objects. Here the plasma is classical and speeds are uh, relatively slow. So now we just discuss to model the plasma uh, outflow and the generation of mechanism for the generation of magnetic field uh, in a simple way, uh, considering the set of two fluid plasma equations. 
So this, these are the electron equations, momentum conservation and uh, uh, den uh, tem I mean uh, density conservation or mass conservation. And similarly, these are the equations for ions. And this is equation of state for ideal gas law. And since these equations, these are charged particles, so these fluid equations are coupled with this set of Maxwell's equations. And our aim is to find out analytical solutions of these coupled nonlinear partial differential equations and highlight the physical significance of these solutions briefly with some possible applications. And before doing that, I want to introduce, maybe many of you know it very well, but the Beerman battery concept. So Beerman was trying to explain how the seed magnetic fields are generated in these stars. So in 1950, he presented the idea that if there is temperature gradient and density gradient in electron fluid, and he assumed that this magnetic field is produced on a longer time scale compared to electron plasma oscillation. So this assumption that tau is much greater than the time period of electron oscillation, he ignored, we can ignore the electron inertia, me tends to zero, and using other part of the assumption that tau is much smaller than ion plasma oscillation time, he assumed that we can ignore the ion dynamics. So ions can be assumed to be static, electrons are inertialess. So a very narrow window for this. And this term, Lorentz term, VE cross B was also neglected just to start with a very simple physical model. So in this, uh, under these assumptions, the electron equation of motion becomes very simple, equation 10. Electric field balances the pressure, electron pressure gradient. If we take curl of this equation, we see that magnetic field is produced if del N E and del T E are independent of time. So then it is very easy to integrate. If we integrate this equation, we obtain this equation 12, which tells that at any time tau later after T zero, the magnitude of magnetic field will be uh, del N E cross del T E. So del N E divided by N E can be written as log N E, and that is the cross with delta T E. Now application to galactic plasmas. So this theoretical model has been applied to estimate the seed magnetic field generated in galaxies. So. Uh, remain temperature of electron. Huh. So ions, ions are stationary. I have said that it is assumed that ions are in the background. Stationary. Uh, this is the model, Beerman's model. We will see later. So uh, in this uh, publication, he assumed that the thickness of the cloud, because they divide galaxy in clumps of different clumps of gases, large scale, and for example, if we consider a uh, clump of gas with thickness 10 to 2 parsec, and parsec is, you know, very large, I have mentioned somewhere, 10 to 13 kilometers, 3, 10 to 13 kilometers. So if thickness is 10 to 2 parsec, and he assumed galactic radius 10 to 4 parsec, then using that equation, Beerman's battery equation, the magnetic field after time tau will be expressed as equation 13. Now, del N E over N E has been estimated as exponential here, one over H. That is the thickness of the cloud. And temperature gradient, he estimated from edge of the galaxy to the center, and he took it 10 to 6 Kelvin. And tau, the time of galactic is uh, magnetic field generation, seed magnetic field generation is approximately the time of formation of galaxies. And galaxies are assumed to be formed in first billion years after the creation of universe. So during this time, the magnitude of magnetic field turns out to be 10 to minus 17 Gauss, which is greater than that. So that was the seed magnetic field. As Professor Mahajan yesterday was telling, that is then uh, amplified by the dynamo effect, uh, two present values of micro Gauss. 
Then the same uh, theoretical model was applied to explain the generation of magnetic field in laser plasmas, classical laser plasmas. So then that equation can be written in this form as in equation 14. And assuming that the density gradient, temperature gradients have these order. And in those times, the plasma produced had the electron density 10 to 20 per cubic centimeter and temperature was 1 keV. CS, the sound speed turns out to be 3 into 10 to 7 centimeter per second, while omega PI is 10 to 13. So putting all these values, the magnetic field turns out to be 0 0.6, 10 to 6 Gauss. And it was completely in agreement with the observations. Mega Gauss fields were observed in those days in laser plasmas. So computer simulations and other calculations take into account different effects of ions, plasma rotation, resistivity, many things with simulation. And the model which takes into, we all know that there is MHD. We have heard a lot of about MHD, two fluid model, all multi-fluid. If you have dust, then you can increase. And if temperatures are important and micro instabilities and temperature effects appear, then we talk uh, or we consider the kinetic model, kinetic theory. There uh, and the model which works in this uh, time scale where we ignore electron inertia and assume ions to be static is a very narrow window of time. And in this time, we see that electron inertia is ignored, ions are assumed to be static. Now, if we look at the laser experiment, you can see that omega pi is 10 to minus 13, and tau, which they assume, was about 10 to minus 10, much longer than the ion plasma oscillation time. So that was the initial point from where I started looking at this problem, that this is inconsistent to assume ions to be static. But the problem was how to uh, take into account ion dynamics because then the system becomes very complicated. And I, I don't know computer simulation, so we need to formulate problem uh, to do analytically. So these were some comments on Beerman battery. First is the, uh, as I have shown, the inconsistency with the consistency with the application and the theoretical model. Other is that this Lorentz term B cross V E, as magnetic field is produced as soon as, then this term should be operative in the system, electron dynamics. And when we apply this model to galaxies for one billion year, assuming the time, and we assume that uh, ions are static. This also seems to be. Maybe for initial calculations, it is OK. But one needs to consider all these things. So about EMHD, I have written a few uh, my comments and uh, calculations uh, very long time ago. But now in the, and this is the, um, for me, a useful point, because most of the work has been done in isolation. So here, this is an opportunity to discuss with you people. So as I told you that numerical simulations can take into account many effects, which analytically we cannot, but our interest is to find out analytical solutions of plasma equations, which can explain the generation of seed field, magnetic field, along with flows, because we want to take into account electron flow, uh, flow ion flow. And This is just symbolic. This is, it means ions can be assumed to be stationary. Yeah, I am presenting. Uh, yes, I am just presenting beer man battery effect. What is this? And its applications. Now we will, we will discuss ion dynamics also. I am going to discuss that. Okay, so important point to note is that the magnitude of heat, uh, magnetic field produced by density and temperature gradient is very small. This we will see in calculations. But the flow produced, the vorticity, and 
it is directly related with flow, that turns out to be very large. So this is also a point, I think the baroclinic vectors, these gradients, they produce large flows in plasmas. So two dimensional, actually I started this work when I was visiting Japan and I, I write a paper with Professor Yoshida. So in this theoretical model, uh, two dimensional solution, uh, there was one problem which I also noticed later when I uh, understood this problem more deeply that one of the component of the magnetic field, for example, we have three uh, dimensional magnetic field, one of the component remains constant. It means that system has already some magnetic field and we want to generate magnetic field. So there should not be any magnetic field given. First was this. So what I did is that using the same assumptions that cosi neutrality, because uh, we are considering large scale dynamics, so cosi neutral plasma, temperature gradients are there. Now J denotes electron and ions. So we will now consider both dynamics. And density gradient is also there. Plasma is produced with these gradients and they are non-parallel because we want to take curl of these del N cross del T. So if they are parallel, it will become zero. The mechanism will disappear. So flows, this is the restriction which I impose to simplify the model. That long, uh, flows are longitudinally uniform. So divergence Vj, divergence of both flows is zero. And we assume that density is constant in time as in Beerman battery. But we know that uh, such a system cannot remain independent of time. Density will also evolve with time, but that is a later problem. And other uh, dimensions uh, and assumptions are same. We ignore electron inertia. So in this case, the electron equation of motion becomes 15, equation 15. So here VE can be related with ion velocity and uh, curl of B through Ampere's law. Because when we uh, ignored the displacement current, Maxwell's equation reduces to Ampere's law and then these velocities are related. So replacing this VE, and you see the curl of equation 15, becomes in this form. And here left-hand side is the generation of magnetic field. On right-hand side, the second term is the same as Beerman had, but this term, which is nonlinear, VE cross B, this is problematic, complicated term. And if we replace VE by Ampere's law, it becomes in the form of 16. So here we see that left-hand side has the time dependent magnetic field. If nonlinear terms, one, two, and three, which are very complex, complicated, if they vanish, we have the same form as Beerman hat, considering the electron equations. And if we look at Ion's equation and take curl of this equation, it becomes in the form of 17. And again, it has these nonlinear terms, very complicated terms. And we have used this uh, classical gas law. Now we look at uh, continuity equation. So if density partial T n is zero, as we have assumed that density is time independent, and then flow is longitudinally uniform. So we have an other condition on our flow and density gradient that del n dot Vj must be zero. And if we divide with n, we write, uh, instead of density, we write psi. So del psi dot Vj should be zero. And Ampere's law also requires that the gradient of psi dot del cross B must be zero. So these two conditions we need if density is time independent and flow is longitudinally uniform. In addition to these conditions, we also, assume that all complicated nonlinear terms vanish with our solution, which is which has to be proved. Uh, in the beginning, it looks that we have dropped, but not, we have not dropped. We want to find out structure of psi 
and temperature gradient in such a way that all these nonlinear terms automatically vanish. So this we will see later. So, so we have two equations, equation 20, this is just Beermann battery. And equation 21 tells us that magnetic field is not independent of vorticity, ion's vorticity. And ion's vorticity is linked with the baroclinic vector of ions. And if we uh, add these two term uh, equations, or we uh, subtract 20 from 21, we see that this addition of baroclinic ve vectors of electrons and ions produces ion's vorticity and which is linked with electron velocity as well through Ampere's law that we know. So this equation 22 is also an important result. Since we see that vorticity, ion vorticity is linked with magnetic field, it can be parallel or anti-parallel to the vorticity. So let us assume that magnetic field is directly related with the uh, ion's vorticity, equation 23. So now, we have to choose the form of psi, temperature, spatial profiles, because these are given. And in addition to this, we need to satisfy all the conditions which we have mentioned. So now, first, uh, I just want to see that how nonlinear terms can vanish. So suppose velocity has this structure that curl of this nonlinear term vanishes. Okay, we will prove it later, but suppose that this vanishes and this velocity structure has the form that if we take del square, we express it as eta vi and eta is some constant. So these are again two conditions on the velocity and we will find and see that velocity turns out to be in the form of psi. Therefore, psi should also satisfy the similar equation as 26. Now, 24, 25, and 26, along with these conditions, that divergence Vi is zero, B is proportional to the ion's vorticity, divergence psi dot Vj is zero, and divergence psi dot del cross B zero. If these conditions satisfy, then we find a very neat and clean two equations, which produces vorticity and magnetic field. Now, I just show that how these nonlinear terms vanish. If this, this we have shown that if curl of Vi cross del cross Vi is zero, then this term del cross Vi B will be zero because v, B is the curl of Vi. So if this is zero, then del cross Vi cross B is zero. Now we look an, at another equation. That is the vorticity equation we related here. So take curl of this equation 23. Curl of 23 gives del cross B in terms of velocity. And we see that divergence Vi is our assumption that it is zero. It means del and del square Vi is eta Vi. So now we have found one thing in our system that velocity is curl of magnetic field and magnetic field is curl of velocity. So these are the characteristics of our flow and velocity fields. Now, this is again a third term. Here it is ions. It is automatically related with the uh, electrons. So this is the model which I am modifying this Beermann battery effect from the beginning. That was the other part. This is the second part. So we are taking into account ion dynamics. Okay, so this term, if we write, it becomes in the form of Vi cross B, curl of it, and we have seen in equation 27 that it is zero. So this term also vanishes. Now we look the last term, that is del psi cross del cross B del cross uh, B. So we just write it in this form, and it turns out to be in the form of equation 30. So divergence psi dot B. B is equal to del psi cross del T. So this dot product vanishes. And this from continuity equation, we have seen that this should vanish. So interestingly, 
on, all nonlinear terms can vanish if the a form of velocity psi and t we found uh, appropriately. And that is the main step now, that how we can. It is not linear process, but is complicated process. But I am trying to simplify the problem to find out analytical solutions. But of course, this will just give an insight to the physical processes and uh, I mean, uh, 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 basic mechanism, but uh, people can now try if we put, for example, collinear terms, I cannot solve analytically. And also these nonlinear terms, I cannot solve. So, okay, I think later on we can discuss, but here, as an exercise, I am presenting three-dimensional solution, just a mathematical exercise. I do not have found any application of this, but then I will show you the two-dimensional solution. It has very interesting, in my opinion, very interesting application that we will discuss. So quickly, I'll just tell you one thing. You can check because, uh, but this is some cumbersome. Three-dimensional solution requires a lot of uh, algebra to prove. But two-dimensional is very easy. So this form of psi, I don't know how physical it is or not. So three-dimensional solution, we just see as mathematical exercise at present. I am trying to find out its application, but later. So if psi has this form and t has this form, you see if we take gradient of t, it becomes just constant because this t naught j prime is the uh, gradient of temperature, which we assume is a constant. So then what happens is this term del psi del tj, because these are the source terms. It has the form of psi because t naught j prime comes out of the equation, uh, cross product, and all terms are in the form of psi. So vi turns out to be in this form, equation 34 in three dimension and magnetic field turns out to be in the form of 35. So this is the mathematical expression. Its application I am not presenting here and I do not know at present. Now we discuss, okay, to neutral fluids because it is a simpler set of equations, two main equations. So we have more general solution. So here the solution is psi e raised to power alpha plus beta plus gamma. So if I write uh, psi in this form and temperature remains lin linear as earlier, we have again the vorticity produced by this vector and psi has this form and velocity that form. So now I discuss, and that can also be applied to MHD. I, I don't know, I have, okay, so single fluid also, but now we do slightly interesting problem with application, that is the two-dimensional solution, which I will present just after this. First, we make some background uh, general, what we are doing. So if we look at sun, sun is divided into two main regions, exterior and interior. Interior has core where the huge uh, thermonuclear reactor exists and energy is produced here. Beyond core is the radiative zone. Here the gas is almost static and absorption and emission processes are taking place. And then comes the convective zone where the plasma is in motion. Above convective zone is photosphere. Above photosphere is chromosphere and above chromosphere is corona. Even our earth lies in corona, but we will study and discuss corona uh, closer to the chromosphere, just uh, upper. So this is the uh, figure I took from priest book. You can see it. So I just go here to, to give you some flavor of uh, solar structure uh, for the application so that you can uh, appreciate application. Thickness of the photosphere is approximately 500 kilometer and density is 10 to 13 electron density and temperatures are low. Therefore, neutrals also exist there. And this is the reason that we have 
visible light, mostly visible light from the sun surface. And the spectrum of sun, although it contains X-rays, ultraviolet, etc., but most of the part and intensity comes in the visible uh, spectrum. The gamma rays, which are produced in the core, when they pass the radiative zone and emission and absorption processes takes place, and they reach the surface, they turn into visible light, long wavelengths, they become visible light. But these are basically the gamma rays produced in the core. And photos, above photosphere is chromosphere. You can imagine 2000 or 2500 is the thickness. Here, density is low, temperature is high, so it is almost fully ionized. Plasma, neutrals are very few. Beyond chromosphere is corona. And in corona, this is a mystery. The temperature rises suddenly in a very thin layer of transition region between chromosphere and corona. So we are not discussing this here, but still there is a lot of literature on this problem. The temperature has very, okay, I just show the fig figure. From surface, we go above, temperature first decreases, then again increases, remains somewhat constant, and then it takes a jump. And this is the transition region through which it abruptly increases. And these are the figures about sun. So these are the spicules. Now I will apply this two-dimensional theoretical model to create the spicules. This is grass-like structure, as grass on the earth, they say. So sun has the grass of hot plasma. These are plasma tubes, cylindrical tubes, emerging all the time. And uh, maybe I have shown uh, uh, right here that at any time, we, if we look at the surface of the sun, there are half a million spicules on this surface. So this is a very common phenomena and one needs to understand what is happening in the plasma here. Now, this is the two dimensional version of our exact solution, which uh, was published in 2010. Okay. Three dimensional is recent, but we don't have any application for that so far. So if psi has this structure, e raised to power iota, oh no, mu x plus nu y and uh, plus e raised to power mu x minus nu y, this is the structure of psi. And tj varies linearly along z and y direction. Then we produce magnetic field you see here in equation 50 in three dimensional. And the flow also becomes three dimensional because we are not interested in three dimensional. I just want to see the vertical flow, how it is produced. So if we suppress this Y variation and just consider, okay, here is, uh, okay, I will discuss it later. So here, if we take, the variation of temperature just along vertical direction, because this is the observed. So temperature gradient is given. We are not assuming it now, it is given. We just, what I think is that if temperature gradient in the system is given in astrophysical laboratory, it is not the uh, laboratory scale, then anywhere, if density gradients are produced and they have appropriate form, then the force, baroclinic effect force that gives acceleration to the plasma in vertical direction. So this we will just show here that how it happens. Then we see that, okay, actually one point is you have not asked, I just mentioned here. You look at equation 51. The spicules actually have external magnetic field also because the magnetic field is generated by the sun solar dynamics. And we have studied the magnetic field generation by Beerman mechanism modified or extended to include ion dynamics also. So the two dimensional model, which I presented before this, it remains valid. I have checked it. If there is a constant magnetic field, but it is just unidirectional. If it has more directions, then the model does not work. So if it is unidirectional. So we assume or suppose that these spicules have an external magnetic field along Z axis and the generated magnetic field BG. 
by baroclinic effects. So this is the total magnetic field in this structure. Then model remains applicable. And generated magnetic field, when we put the appropriate magnitudes of scale lengths, density gradient scale length, temperature gradient scale length, magnetic field turns out to be very small, generated. But velocity, you see at velocity 55 equation, it turns out to be along Z axis. So this was the, the main interest. Velocity has only one component in the vertical direction, if this is given. So this was the interesting point. Now point is other. The speculs have long length. And it is also observation that they move with constant velocity. That is the observed fact. So what I think is that in the bottom of the speculum, we just consider a plasma slab, for example, in x direction, it is from zero to xm. Here, just I, I have some time, little five, five, 10 minutes I have. Yeah, but, huh? Okay. These should not be parallel, then problem becomes one dimensional. So I consider just one part and yes, we assume that density falls like this exponential in x, y plane. So actually we should consider four quadrants and then instead of cylinder, we have a sphere emerging from the surface of from, from chromosphere to upward. And then what I assume is that if this is the speculum, we consider this thickness of the plasma. Here acceleration is produced and this part moves up. And one after the other, these structures are formed and we have a form of uh, speculum or cylindrical structure. So this was based on the Cartesian coordinates. And we assume that temperature gradient you see here, T prime, Tz2 minus Tz1. This is the uh, linear scale length. If we divide with the thickness H, we can estimate the gradient of temperature and the acceleration produced, uh, where is A naught? A naught is two. T here I assume the temperature equal, but ions and electron temperature is not equal. Uh, ion temperature is two times electron temperature. Uh, otherwise, it's not, but for rough estimate, we see the acceleration, upward acceleration. It turns out to be 3.3, 10 to 4 centimeter per second. And on solar surface, the solar gravitational acceleration is 2.74, 10 to 4 centimeter per second scale. It means that this effect produces larger acceleration in opposite direction. So my viewpoint is that these uh, structures move in upward direction uh, great, with greater acceleration than the solar acceleration. And when they leave this part and reaches here, the gradient disappears, either temperature gradient disappears or density gradient disappears. So they look as if they are moving with constant velocity because then there are, that is the observation. But here the point is that we assume cylindrical flow as a uh, scare flow or like this. But uh, I did some work, but at that time I, so this is the form of just uh, psi and density. And this is the schematic of that. And the flow is only along vertical direction with this. So now I tell you, and I forgot to uh, mention here that this cylindrical paper, uh, POP 2021. And there I did not, uh, uh, I mean, present the application, but this is actually a better application in cylindrical coordinates. And we see that there are many conditions on psi, velocity and other structures, but luckily, if we look at this psi as function of r theta and tj as tj prime z linear, it remains linear because it is given. So del psi cross del tj turns out to be in the form of 58. This is, and this is the form of magnetic field on r theta plane. 
So this condition you see, uh, I mentioned in previous slides that this must satisfy del square psi, lambda square psi or lambda, whatever we call, this is some real uh, parameter. And this equation satisfies if psi has this form given in 60, because the Bessel functions obey the condition 61 and 62. So this was very fortunate that due to these relations of Bessel functions 61 and 62, we can satisfy Helmholtz equation. This is Helmholtz equation, uh, del square psi equal to some constant psi. So this equation satisfy if psi has this form. So this is the J1, uh, Bessel function of order one, cos theta. So this psi will also attain zero, uh, I mean, uh, not zero value. It is because n divided by n naught, if it is equilibrium density, so it becomes one. So at equilibrium, it becomes zero. And I just, Okay, so this is the interesting point that again, we produce velocity, equation 63, along axial direction. So this form of psi and temperature gradient in vertical direction produces velocity only along that direction. Therefore, it means that cylindrical plasma can have a force in vertical direction and moves upward. So I show you the helicity becomes zero. This is the form of density. So you see this is in center cylinder here. The flow is broken. So it is not a very uh, uniform type flow. At different places, the acceleration is produced and uh, plasma moves in upward direction and form of psi is in this form. So psi has smaller amplitude because we assume this uh, and, oh, sorry. Psi was log n normalized. So n is exponential psi. Therefore, uh, density amplitude is uh, larger. So I, am, I have presented this quickly. So if <laughs> you comment or think, this will be done. I think we have time for one other question. Yeah. Actually, this model can produce three-dimensional, two-dimensional magnetic field. It depends upon the choice of psi. But at the end, the application of the model, I could find at present. I am discussing with astrophysics, people of astrophysics, uh, and I am thinking that maybe the uh, coronal mass ejection can also be explained, but they say that coronal mass ejection has associated magnetic fields, large magnetic fields, and magnetic reconnection, etc. So this mechanism can be just an additional effect on it, but that we will look later. But unidirectional flow, that is a special case, special solution. But my point is, suppose, suppose your laser is X and Y? Yes. If they are acting in the same direction or the B0, external magnetic field, we assume is in the uh, in Z along Z dex axis. And it is it turns out that its magnitude, for example, on the sun is about 100 Gauss in supposed here, the generated magnetic field is very small, 10 to minus seven Gauss, if you, you put these magnitudes. So this means that basically, that is why people say that it is a seed magnetic field. Magnetic field produced by baroglinic effect is very small, but flows are produced are very large. So I think it is the mechanism which explains flows more uh, dominantly than the magnetic field. Then. Okay, is there for you another question? Virtual particles. 
Plasma don't follow, does not follow. Flows for a while, no? Huh? Like it, uh, it appears like a uh, place and everywhere. And huh? The particles follow the same. Uh, I, I, that's why my understanding that they place and everywhere. So, is there any uh, relation that uh, we can use plasma to understand the characteristics of micro particles? Because plasma also place and everywhere. Uh, I think Professor Mahajan maybe can uh, no, explain. Yeah, but but what we are applying this is the uh, I mean uh, plasma given by nature to us, not. Maybe experimentalists can answer better than us experimentalists. Well, all right, I'm sure you guys can discuss this issue. Uh, right. I, I have no idea. I don't understand the question. So, you know. I don't know what is the elimination term. What is being eliminated? So I think we are kind of mixing up things all together. And uh, sometimes we do create the notion of some so called virtual particles, as you say. These are some kind of abstractions in the system. All right. And you can give them a particle character, like things like phonons, even substances. But I mean, their properties as particles and antiparticles comes with a question of uh, the topic of this stuff. Yeah. There are no anti phonons, you know, you could animate their phonons. Yeah. At least not to the best of my knowledge. So, one, one must not uh, um, extend the concept to somewhat uh, strange limits uh, once we can get it. And, and, you know, so uh, I, I, I don't mean um, to kind of discourage people from thinking of new processes. You should, that's 